Now they are a site that has been all too rare in our region over recent decades, but a conservation group is hoping to re-establish a healthy population of golden eagles in the south of Scotland. Three young eagles have been released in the southern uplands and the people behind the project hope that if they thrive, they could lead to the species recolonising parts of Cumbria. Well, Jennifer accordingly joins us live from the Moffat Hills where the birds were set free. Uh, Jennifer, go golden eagles have been present there for as long as most of us can remember. They haven't really flourished though, have they? So is that likely to change now as a result of this project? Well, the people behind the project certainly hope so. Currently, there are less than five sets of breeding pairs left in the south of Scotland, with none in England or in Wales. The project wants to track and monitor the birds' movements to find out a little bit more about their ranging patterns and the health of the birds. Earlier, I spoke to Dr Kat Barlow. She's project manager of the Eagles project, and she said whilst it does face some challenges, it is hugely significant. We are bringing down young birds from nests elsewhere in Scotland uh, down into aviaries and, and rearing them just, just for a few weeks and then they're released healthy and strong and we can monitor them as they grow and move around the south of Scotland. Golden eagles have been in the south of Scotland for as long as anyone can remember. Why, why have they failed in the past? Um, they used to be here in, in, in much bigger numbers and, and their numbers have certainly, certainly decreased uh, over the years. There's a huge range of impacts on them, um, you know, all sorts of different things and it's, you know, certainly a challenge going forward, um, but we're, we're confident that it's a, a good habitat and, and food and things here and support for them. We're working with land managers and, and, and farmers and communities and people like that so we can make sure that there's a good environment for them to come, come back into. Uh, we've got a huge amount of support from, from lots of different sectors of the environment, which is, which is really, really pleasing. Um, it's certainly a challenge for young eagles, you know, that they can struggle with things like the weather, uh, just like today. Um, it can be quite difficult for them, so um, it's certainly a big learning curve for them, and we're going to be helping them with supplementary food and things through their first autumn and winter until they learn to hunt and look after themselves. Wind farms, yep, um, they're certainly increasing in the south of Scotland. Um, the research has actually shown to date that golden eagles tend to avoid them. So while, you know, they're not everyone's favourite thing, um, we're, we're not too concerned about them. We're, we're you know, um, working, with, working with partners to, to make sure that we can avoid putting new wind farms in areas that, that might be, you know, difficult for eagles. But, um, yeah, the, the research has shown so far that they, they tend to keep away from them. Um, so, yeah, forestry, you know, there's certainly a, a push to can increase forestry across the whole of the south of Scotland. Um, so these eagles are being released in, in the kind of, you know, secret location in the Moffat Hills area, but they will move huge, huge distances. So we're not anticipating that just that one area will host them. They'll be, they'll be all over the south of Scotland. Well, if they do move and if they move out of the south of Scotland, would that be it? Would you sort of admit defeat and think that... They're not, they're not ready to live in the south of Scotland? Um, you know, past experience from other translocation projects has shown that that's unlikely to happen, but they are wild birds. They can go all sorts of different directions. Um, we're working with stakeholders south of the border, so if they move into England, we can support them down there, and we'll be monitoring the birds to see if they, if they fly north again. But we're hoping that they'll, uh, they'll enjoy the, the landscape that we're releasing them into and see how they do. The best possible outcome is that golden eagles can increase their population in the south of Scotland and really embed into, into life in the south of Scotland. We want you know, communities and, business, and businesses to, to benefit from them, you know, so potential tourism and things like that. Uh, golden eagles are, are quite a shy retiring bird, they're not that keen on people, but you know, if we can find ways to allow people to come and see golden eagles and visit this area and, and benefit local people, then that would be fantastic. Well, let's continue that discussion now with our reporter, Jennifer Cordingley, who's live for us in the Moffat Hills, where the birds were released. Uh, Jennifer, we heard Dr Barlow there seemingly quite positive about how the birds will take to life in the southern uplands. Have you found that everybody shares that opinion? Uh, no, there are claims that eagles have been heavily persecuted in the past killed through shooting, through traps and through poisoning. As recently as earlier this year, one eagle that was reared in, this, in the Scottish borders was found un dead under suspicious circumstances just outside Edinburgh. Now, as you heard there in the interview, this landscape has always had the capacity to house golden eagles, but the scenery, this beautiful landscape is ever evolving with man-made change, human-made change um, that makes it difficult 
So there are um, there are mixed opinions uh, from each, each side, but t only time will tell if these birds truly thrive or even stay in the south of Scotland. Well, let's hope they do. Jennifer in the Moffat Hills, thank you very much.